my part to welcome you here. Um, so as Jean-Francois said, I'm in the uh, Computational Information Systems Laboratory. I'm the user services manager. So the team who's uh, working the platform, providing the support for the platform is largely in my section. Uh, and I'm here to present this. And let me first start by apologizing if you've seen some of this already. Uh, I've been given a number of these presentations, uh, but normally I don't have Carl Taylor to explain what CMIP is, and I'm usually have it have the one uh, have to do that myself um, to audiences who don't know what it is coming in the door. So uh, usually I have to start by explaining that. Uh, IPCC is not the Intel Parallel Computing Center, which we also have here at NCAR, but in fact the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, CMIP is this and so forth. So uh, there may be a few slides in here that contain some uh, background information you've already seen, uh, but it is an interesting topic to many folks. Last week, in fact, I was giving it to uh, the Rocky Mountain I don't know, it's a long acronym I can't remember myself, but it was a group of networking folks, and it was folks from ESNet asking about different use cases for high performance networking, and the current approach for publishing CMIP data is a great example of what they would love to have, uh, rather than having a platform like this, having networks that function well around the world that allow you to do the work uh, without having to have a CMIP analysis platform, but that's not where we're at today. So this is where we're, uh, this is a talk is about what we are doing today to make it possible for you. So again, here's the background slide that I mentioned. But the the main point here is two petabytes of data, 20 modeling groups, 4.3 million files, 59,000 data sets. NCAR alone had 200 terabytes of that data here. But this is a huge investment in time, effort. And, compute, and, and computing resources. I think I did the math, and it was something like a third of Blue Fire for a year was used to do our portion of it, if not more than that. I, had, I would have to go back and do it. But a large amount of our main production resource back in 2010 to 2012. And uh, CMIP 6, which I'm sure you'll get to later in the, the week, is you know, vast, vast amounts more of that, and uh, possibly five petabytes from NCAR. So you, as potential persons interested in comparing those uh, data have a problem if you want to look at uh, plan ahead for CMIP 6. Uh, if you can locate petabytes of disk for your uh, campus to do this, uh, more power to you. I'll be happy to chat with you about that. Um, so the data, the CMIP 5 project had a very important problem to solve, and that's figuring out what to do with this volume of data. Uh, three, four years ago, two petabytes is much more significant than it is now. And it costs money to store. I mean, at that size, it's a very important economic question of where is who's going to pay to hold this. And a very rational solution was, if you publish it, you will store it. Uh, it's very logical. However, for uh, researchers, individuals, not at those locations, it does present a challenge. The data you want to look at, it, it turns into what they call a venue challenge, if you like the big Vs of uh, big data problems. So, but, so it turns it from a volume problem, which they solved, into a venue challenge for you. And inner comparison, right in the name, does require having that data nearby. So, uh, and few, if any, sites can store large portions of the CMIP5 data on disk at any time. Even NCAR can't say, here, we'll plop down two petabytes and put all the data at one place indefinitely for uh, the good of the community. It's just not tech economically feasible. And certainly at universities, uh, having two petabytes handy just for your personal use is going to be a challenge. Uh, maybe in a couple years, it'll be a, a drive you buy off Amazon. But right now, uh, it's not possible. So. So what we've done here at Sizzle is we did have pieces of the pro of the puzzle, and uh, you know we have a 16 petabyte GPFS par parallel file system called Glade. We do have 200 terabytes of uh, published CMIP5 data on that Glade disk, so we already had some of the data on disk. We are also part of the the CMIP Federation, the ESDF Federation, where we're sharing uh, that data with the world, and so we know who to talk to at the other sites. We do have some large scale analysis clusters that did have some untapped capacity and do continue to have some untapped capacity and uh, so are available for your use to do the comparisons. So Geyser is probably one of the systems you'll use this week. Uh, it has 16 nodes, 40 Westmere cores, if you're familiar with your Intel uh, code names, uh, Westmere cores. Each of those Geyser nodes has a terabyte of memory. So 
a sizable resource that most universities don't have access to either. Maybe your advanced uh, research computing department might have something like that, but we have 16 of those here. We also have the Caldera cluster, which is 30 nodes now, 16 cores. Those are Sandy Bridge cores, the same as on Yellowstone. Each of the Caldera nodes has 64 gigabytes of memory. 16 of those has dual uh, GPUs. I believe they're NVIDIA K20s or K20Xs at this point. So two sizable analysis clusters that you also might not have access to locally. The other piece that we're getting NSF funding for and the primary support from NSF is for the support expertise. So we have HPC and application expertise here. That's in my section, uh, in addition to what CGD provides, obviously. But we, we can help you use the systems. That's what our mission is and our goal. So we can do that. Uh, we, have, we can help you run codes that you might not be familiar with, especially, for example, coming here and wanting to run MATLAB on a shared uh, interactive resource. That's maybe different than popping it up on your laptop. So we can help you walk through that and what you have to change, how you have to do that. Uh, also at, at, on site, obviously, we have ESGF and CMIP expertise. So if we really need to provide another level, we can find some resources to, to help you out. But what we had to do is create a coherent uh, service out of this. And that's what the CMIP analysis platform is. So it's not anything new. It's just a different way of thinking about what we already provided with the additional user support that, that's needed to do this. So. The analysis platform is helping to address these big data venue and volume problems. It is, as I mentioned, funded by NSF primarily for university community. But it is, has turned out to be of interest to the NCAR folks as well. And we're allowing them to uh, leverage this as long as it doesn't take away from university needs. Uh, it's available to any researcher who is eligible for our normal university small or educational allocations. So. In, in short, if you have an NSF award that would involve comparing climate data, you're eligible, right? Or your advisor, or if you're um, uh, any, on any project that you're eligible to say, I'm working with, you can apply. And if you're a grad student or a postdoc who are working on your dissertation work or a postdoctoral research project, you can also apply without an NSF award. So we will support you in doing a dissertation project on this platform. So you can have that access. All of this is free. There is no cost. Yes, you have a question? Um, well, if you have an NSF award that's eligible, we'll probably make whatever happens. Most of those go to the US, but there we just did have a request come in for someone who's doing an international collaboration with Cambridge. But it's got an NSF award, so I'm happy to provide the support. Um, for grad students and postdocs, it would be US based. Yes. Um, and so part of, and a big part of what we're doing now is prototyping this service to get ready for CMIP 6, where the problem is even greater, going to be even greater and much more significant. We, we recognize that, uh, although, as Carl noted, that there's a lot of untapped uh, science to be done out of the current data, a lot of the really eager folks have already done that, but that's perfect for me and my team, I think, because we need some time to learn how to do this. So we're learning this uh, as we do with CMIP 5. So something we hope to get out of this uh, tutorial is some active and eager users to help push us along the way. Uh, we've had some interest, but when you're spinning up a new resource like this, uh, the first and, and hardest thing is to find those first sets of users who really want to say, yes, this is what I want to do. Here's my problem. Help me do this, and, and push us along. Uh, right now, uh, we've had some interest. But that hasn't necessarily translated into usage yet. So we really need that next step of taking that interest and saying, wow, this is cool. I have an interesting problem. We need some people to come and, and, and help push us along and say, OK, here's what I want to do, uh, and here's my timeline. So in effect, the analysis platform, back to where I said, it's basically a bubble drawn around stuff that we already had. Uh, Geyser and Caldera, the disk space. Um, we added a catalog of current holdings. Right now, it's just a, a simple Drupal web page that's run on a script across the disk space. But as this improves, we might look at how we can improve that. And we have a, a pending data requests, which right now are, uh, you can either select it from a website of some options, or you can just submit a straight uh, ticket to our help desk and, and ask for different uh, data sets. Again, that's another piece where we want to say, how do you want to ask us for this? And how can we let you ask for it in the way that makes sense to you? Um, there's 
uh, lots of options here. Obviously, so many data sets, lots of different ways to, to look at it. So if you don't not quite sure, the best way is to submit a help ticket to us and say, hey, I'd like to get this data in the analysis platform for this project. Um, do that. Um, but the first thing is get an allocation. So once we know you're an eligible and interested researcher, that's your first step. Fairly easy. Um, should take you 10 minutes, and you should have that project set up within a day or so. Uh, it's really not complicated if you're eligible. Yeah, question? Sure. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's a very good question that we're also working out right now. And it, in fact, since we started this in January, we have, you know, filled up Glade in a, in a significant way. Um, so it would be challenging, but don't let that necessarily stop the request uh, because it's turning out that it's non-trivial, even for smaller space sizes, it's not a non-trivial task. So there's time. Um, what I'd really like to see is some modestly sized requests with an actual need and an actual timeline that I can put in front of our support team. Look, this person has a plan, has a request, this is what they want to do and how quickly they need to do it or how quickly they'd like to do it, let's say. Um, let's make it happen. Um, you're right that I couldn't accept 300 terabytes of, of requests right now and get it any time in the next uh, month or so. But Cheyenne is coming online. Uh, our new uh, replacement for or successor to Yellowstone. And along with that, later this year, we'll have 21 more petabytes of disk, at which point the sky's the limit. So it's, it's really right now that it's a problem, but we're happy to get started. Um, there's also the question, I mean, in lo a lot of requests may not be nearly as large. It's more of a, it may be a uh, management task of, OK, I need data from multiple sites. Uh, I've had trouble accessing this one, or I'm not quite sure uh, where to go to get some of this. So we can also help that with, and the more modest size requests to get us started would be great. But you're right, if you have a very large need right now, that might put us in a bit of a pickle for a very uh, next few weeks or so. Yes. We sh hmm. Right. Yeah, that's and that's what we're really hoping to get to meet initially. I mean, it would be a challenge right now, as you mentioned, that the disk is a little full. But let me emphasize, though, we have these requests. But I, I do want to emphasize, we are not replacing the Earth System Grid Federation, we are not subsuming those that need to store this permanently. The analysis platform is really, you could think of it interlibrary loan. Can I get this data here for a little while uh, until, to do my work? And um, we do have plans. And if you look at the catalog, we do have on there, when, is it, when will this data be deleted? Right? We want to encourage people not to think about this in terms of, well, I'm in my PhD program for the next four years, so I'll put the data out there and I'll get to it eventually. Uh, we really need you to be thinking about it in terms of, okay, I want the data there. If you can get it by this date, I will finish in three months. That's the kind of uh, project we're really looking for. Someone who knows it's not as critical now other than the ability to put anything in it because of the space. But when we, if we have 500 terabytes and we're full, uh, every, time, every week you're not analyzing it, someone else can't do any work. So uh, yes, another question there? Um, that's an interesting question that I am just not enough of an expert to be able to answer it coherently. What I would say is that's the kind of thing that we'd love to see in a ticket request, and we'll see how we can answer that. 
Um, and we'll see if it's possible. That's the kind of thing we can help you work out and say, OK, that's what you want. We'd probably go find somebody like Eric Neenhouse, who runs the node here, and say, can we get this for this person? Uh, if, and if he says, I'm not sure what that means either, we'd probably go ask someone like JF and say, can we, is this something that's possible, and how do we go about doing it? So that's the sort of expertise that we would bring to bear on that kind of question. Let me put it that way. Um, so what else did I want to point out here? Um, Right. So, and, and if you already have a Yellowstone allocation, uh, the, this is on disk. Anything's readable. So, uh, other things to keep in mind: every most of the data sets that are popular from the Research Data Archive, which is also managed here, are on Glade. Uh, all of the NCAR data is on Glade. This is augmenting all this other stuff. Uh, the Earth, Earth Observing Lab here at, at, at NCAR is also adding their collection, so well, field campaign data. So there's lots of possibilities of you know, not just CMIT, but other data that, that you could possibly bring to bear. Uh, and we're really looking down the road for what else could you use, what else could you do once you have all this in one place. So as I mentioned, we're planning to make up to 500 terabytes available for CMIP5 on this interlibrary loan basis. Um, as noted, not tomorrow, but uh, over the course of a, uh, some time. It, it has taken us longer in some cases to sort of work through exactly the best way to do this. Um, we are augmenting the metadata that's provided to include this date additive added to the system in the tentative removal date. So to keep people on point that, no, this isn't forever. This is while you need it, and you better be prepared to use it when you say you are. Um, the, the data is available on the CMIP analysis platform page, which is, uh, I provide the link there. And as I already mentioned, we'll be looking at more formal metadata catalog services as, the, as, we, as this grows or, or what might make sense. Um, but more on the data arrangement later this week when the tutorial. Uh, Davide Delvento, I think, is going to talk more specifically about where you'll actually find the data. <coughs> this is uh, asking for the allocation request. If you uh, go to our allocations page, find out how to submit the request, you'll find CMIP analysis platform among the resources that you ask for. Um, it's no more simple than saying putting a one in that box. In fact, yes, I would like to have access to this. Um, You'll also be asked for some geyser and caldera to put in an entry for geyser and caldera time, because that's the resource you'll actually use. The allocations request is mostly to say, yes, this is what I'm interested in. And that's almost as much for us to tell NSF, yes, this is the interest we've been getting in this resource. Uh, it's a tracking tool more than a, a usage uh, request. Um, and any pending data set requests that we have should be on our web page as well, along with um, the data request form for asking us to add more to the, to the thing. You go to the website and you can ask that. Please do get the allocation first before you start asking for data. Uh, that just helps us be aware that, oh yes, they are interested in this. They're not just clicking on a web form randomly and submitting a complicated uh, sel selection from the CMIP uh, data offerings. Um, we will, in many cases, also contact you. Did you really mean to put in a seam of analysis platform request? We do get people who just put numbers in everything. Uh, and <laughs> if you have it, I must want it. So uh, we do sometimes follow up and say, hey, just to clarify that you do understand what this platform is. Uh, because it, like I said, it's a tracking tool for us to say, is there interest, or is it just somebody filling in a block box? Um, something interesting that uh, is more maybe more for the technical folks, but I do want to highlight that um, Part of this reporting process is to tell NSF, has this been valuable to the university community? So we've done a couple of other pieces. In addition to asking you to enter an allocation request, uh, we'll be linking that to your geyser and caldera use so we can say, aha, this person with a uh, analysis platform allocation has used geyser caldera. So hopefully that means they were actually doing CMIP analysis uh, with that. It's not essential that you do that, but it's a, it's a clue that, or that says it's likely. Um, We've also got some new, a new Glade monitoring script that tracks accesses to the files in that CMIP space. So we can't look at who actually did it, but we will track daily which files were looked at. So which files had been accessed in the course of the day. And it's rolled up to a certain level in the, in the hierarchy, but it says this data set was looked at. Great, somebody bothered to look at these files in this collection. So it helps us also down the road when we are filled up to say, no one's looked at this since we put it out there. It's coming off first. Or this data set's proved very popular, even though we only had this one request for it, but we're, so we're going to keep it out there, uh, or at least double check that it's only this one group that's looking at it and not widely used. Um, 
those are some of the problems we'd like to sort out now before CMIP6 rolls along. So really finding someone who wants to do the analysis of the CMIP data would be great help for us. Uh, there is some data out there now, but as mentioned, we could accommodate a bit more in the short term and then more uh, later this fall. Okay, um, only a couple more slides, so we'll be done plenty of time. Um, this, we did open this up for requests in January of 2016, and we've gotten more than a dozen requests to date. Uh, what I've highlighted for others is we got two institutions who had never had a project lead come to us and say, hey, I'd love to use this platform, or this is, what I, this is why I'm coming to ask you for this allocation, which is great. So it indicates it is a resource for people who don't want to come and use Yellowstone, but did have some needs in this vein, which we're excited about. And hopefully there's some of you here who also are in that, in that category, with, and we'd love to see your allocation requests. Um, the monitoring systems are all in place and operational, and so I can say that it's not been as heavily used as we would have liked. I can see the data set access. Um, I did that beforehand and uh, said, maybe it'll be interesting and I can put a chart up. And well, it wouldn't be an interesting chart, but I could put a chart up. Uh, <laughs> um, and we have have gotten positive unsolicited responses from the community, it says this sounds like a great idea. And you know, we're planning to keep this operational for several years. so. If you have an advisor or you want to submit an NSF award to use it, that is an option. You can put in the award now and come back when that award is, is finalized in six months or so. Uh, but it, if you think of a problem like, gee, if I only had space to put 100 terabytes and, and the analysis capacity to do that, I would do this problem. So this is an opportune time. Like I said, six months is perfect to do this because that's when I'll have disk to actually accommodate such requests. But, but think about that. That was another point of this. Is like, if I had the space or the, the resources, I would do this problem. And we're hoping to find those untapped or unanswered questions that people have thought of and said, I just can't figure out how I would do this. This is what this resource is for. So we are I mean, hoping to see some of those coming down the road as well. Um, what we are looking at is any other feedback you have when you try to use this platform. Okay. Uh, we are looking at changing some of the organization of the data based on initial user feedback. Says, you know, it's, in, it's, it's understandable in the CMIP uh, inner system grid to organize it according to the site that provided the data. But really, when you want to do the analysis, ordering it by the topic. So I want to look at um, precipitation. So let's put the precipitation at the same level so I can find that. So we're looking at different ways to organize it, uh, maybe not the standard CMIP way, for the making analysis uh, easier to do. Um, it does require some work. We haven't gotten there yet. I think there was some of that we were hoping to accomplish before this tutorial, but we didn't quite make it. But any other feedback you have on how you'd like to see this presented or the data stored would be uh, interesting to us as well. Um, we are looking at possibly you know, when we are full and we can't um, keep everything on disk, whether we keep a convenience copy for ourselves locally so that if we get a request for a data set that was popular, but we don't have room for for the short term, that well, rather than us going back and re-ingesting the raw data, we would have a copy that was in our format, and we would put it back uh, when, upon request. But again, let me emphasize, we are not the uh, only source of this data, or the primary source for any of these data sets. And if you go to our website, you'll see that, uh, please, if you use this resource, acknowledge the CMIP data providers as well as the access to the platform here. That's important for all of this to make this sort of resource possible. And we are still having lots of manual work for downloading the data. That's where we're, uh, it's our main bottleneck right now. It's still a lot of staff time. We are working to uh, automate pieces. Uh, but that's going to take a little more time. We do want to get to a point where we understand how to balance these, uh, balance the need for more space than we have. And that's, uh, you know, we're not there right now. If you put data in it right now, you'll have, a, at this point, very unlimited amount of time. But don't uh, think that's the situation for the long term. We do want to get to the point is how do we make that decision when we get full and we can't add more? How do we decide? We want to see what our data says, what our uh, users say. How do we factor this in? We've thought about things like can we put in votes on the website to let users vote for, hey, no, don't put this. These are the data sets I think want, I need to stay. Don't let these go away and, and help factor that into the process. Um, we do want to understand how to get more users on the system, as I mentioned. Uh, so, and then again, like, what is this going to look like when we have CMIP6 data to deal with? We are intending to procure additional disk for that part of the platform. So there'll be Glade disk and then 
CMIP6 disk on top of that added specifically to hold some of the interlibrary loan portion of CMIP6 data. So the, con the competition should be less uh, with the CMIP6 uh, in the CMIP6 time frame. So that's my last slide. I just want to thank all the folks who are doing all the hard work. Um, Eric Neenhaus, uh, David David Levento, who you'll see uh, later this week, Joey Mendoza, BJ Smith, and others. So um, again, I mentioned sending a help ticket, sizzlehelp at ucar.edu. If you have any other questions, that's the best place to get the, the help you need for this problem. So with that, any other, uh, I'm done, and any other questions? Happy to answer a few. Thank you.